Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in to the Two in the Cooler podcast. Today's episode, we've got Brian Fletcher. He's got a lot of great videos up on his YouTube page, and he's putting on a lot of other content right now, so be sure that you guys check him out. Uh, he's a friend of the show, and he was a lot of fun to talk to, so I think you guys will really like this episode. Uh, but before we get into that, I've got to tell you guys about Instacart. People. How many times do we have to go over this? Instacart is, without a doubt, the best way to get your groceries in 2020. Avoid the crowded grocery stores. Forget about the long lines and searching through the aisles aimlessly trying to find what you're looking for. Why not skip all that and get your groceries delivered right to your door in as fast as one hour? Right now, two in the cooler listeners get free delivery on their first order of $35 or more just use the link in our show notes and you guys can get that deal. As always, follow us on social media, subscribe to the YouTube page, subscribe and rate us on Apple Podcasts, and if you get a chance, share the podcast with the people you love. We really appreciate it. Without further ado, here's the episode with Brian Fletcher. Thank you guys for listening. Shit. Slap the shit out of my mic. Good. Let it know who's boss. Yeah. Little bitch. Jesus Christ. Um. <laughs> what's up, Andy? How Nothing. are we? Doing good. Doing uh doing pretty pretty uh pretty okay. You're doing pretty but, okay? You're still standing mm-hmm. there? You got your Coca Cola? There you go. Yeah, that's right. That's good for you. I just mm-hmm. had it delivered. Yeah, it feels pretty good. But uh, I'm excited to get going today because we got with us, uh, gosh, how do you even describe him? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Fletcher. You know him, you love couple him. A couple clicks. A couple clicks. Couple yeah, Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Um, Indescribable. Yeah. Brian, uh, Brian's been, uh, you know. Pretty invested in, in Two in the Cooler from what I could tell from the start, so we're happy to have him on. Oh, well, I am. I missed um, the last episode, but that was because of a vacation. <laughs> we've had Other a few. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I, wanna, that. I do want to talk about that too, but we'll definitely, we've definitely had a few um, uh, non sober conversations about Two in the Cooler. Really? Um, the two of you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, a couple sodas. Conversations. Yeah. A couple sodas and a uh, couple, couple spitty chairs, and next thing you know. Two in the cooler start. Talk starts going. Um, but yeah, so this is something I wanted to bring up because early on, as we say every episode, we were asking a lot of our guests how they're dealing with quarantine. And you actually just got back from vacation in Colorado, correct? Yeah. So what was it like out there? Was there uh, yeah, talk about it. Let us know. It's the same thing. It's it's mass. It's I mean, like you could eat. It's eating outside. It's literally the exact same. They treat it the exact same. Of how we are now. Like, I don't know how they've been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, like, yeah. We but you can, distance, and you, but... Weed cures coronavirus. I have seen it since the beginning. Yeah, weed does cure coronavirus. We've had that talk. I also, I've also seen articles, though, that it actually could potentially hurt you in a coronavirus situation. But, you know, that is for you to speculate on. We are not scientists around here. We don't support facts of any kind. We come up with our own opinions, and we don't generate them in any specific way. But I'm, uh, I had an interesting. What do you like, got? You go ahead. What do you got? No, I want to hear. What I was you just to gonna say. say that. Just reiterate that I'm glad that Brian's on this week because Brian is a guy. Brian is a guy that I would say I um is a guy is like one of those guys that I really really like, but I don't know as well as I could. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, that's I mean, why it's like so special. Like, you're the guy like I see at a party like that I don't know is gonna be there, but I'm so excited. That's that the there. thing. I was even remembering today. There was this. T- it was like, God, I don't know, four, three years ago or something. It was at uh, Fred Fest in Fredonia. It was the only Fred test that I went to in my three years there, and Soft. I think that I had. Like, really, really met Brian, like, one time before when he was at our house. And it was, and we're, you know, we're standing in front of this lawn, and, you know, there's 
this whole street is crowded with people. And it was almost like the Red Sea starts to open up. And I see <laughs> over to my right, Brian, talking to some other guys that we know. And I look at him, he looks at me. And we just, like, ran at each other. And I, d- I mean, like, I barely even knew you then, man. But I just, he's just a guy, you're just a guy that gets me excited, dude. So I'm glad that you are on the <laughs> I podcast. know, because I know what we're going to talk about. Yeah, um, I know what the conversation's going to be. That's right, we're always going to yeah, get into something. I didn't realize that Andrew had such a crush on you, Brian. <laughs> I don't know, I maybe would have kept kept you off the episodes for a little longer until I knew his girlfriend wasn't listening or something. I don't want her to get jealous, but, um... Ah, eh, she'll be alright. Yeah, she knows the deal. Brian has definitely... Brian has definitely been involved in some of the more hysterical moments in my life. He was um, he was involved in the original Hillary Trulk. Um, fiasco. I did come up with it. I don't get enough credit <laughs> for that, but that was. I don't know what that is. For those of you who don't yeah. know what Hillary if Trulk is. If you don't is, know what that is, then you must you not do, be in the house. You, you, yeah, you do. It. You just... <laughs> oh! Um... Yeah. So, there was a time when we were, it was a few years ago, it was probably about the same time stamp, like three or so years ago, four years ago, like freshman year of college, and our parents were away, and we had some of our friends over, Brian included, to hang out at our house and, you know, do whatever young kids do when their parents go away, and at one point, pretty late at night, a group of, of young men, Brian included, vanished, and I couldn't find them. And it turns out that they actually uh, got a hold of our, like, desktop and printer that's upstairs, and they printed out a bunch of pictures on the internet to replace, fa- like, family portraits of ours that were scattered throughout upstairs. <laughs> And the printer ink was low, so they started to come out green. And the one picture, it was a picture of, it was like a face morph of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton mixed together. So the picture was pretty interesting looking to begin with. And then it came out green, so they started to call it Hillary Trulk. (laughs) And it stayed, so there was a picture of Hillary Trulk, there was a picture of Mr. Bean, and I believe there was a picture of Hitler Hitler. that actually stayed... In our picture frames through Christmas time. Yeah, yeah. We had a whole family what did we for Christmas. And this- what was the replacement? Or what was there before? I that? don't. I honest to God think it was a picture of Jesus. What? I think it, yeah, I think it was. I didn't want to. I think it was a small appreciate. portrait of Jesus that was replaced with a printout picture of Hitler, wow. which. That's textbook right there. If you want to talk comedy, um, <laughs> Jesus, that's uh, what a great room. What if yes. I think you only saw this was a family portrait, but then we saw the Jesus, so we had to print. We had to type in Hitler just one more time. Yeah, yeah. There was. Did we uh, really have a picture of Jesus yeah, in the house? Yeah, I mean, I know do. he's everywhere it's in upstairs, spirit, but I just don't remember a photograph. Yeah, yeah. it's um underneath the. Like you know, that no, I know exactly. I, when you well, shower. I know where it is, but the only picture that I ha- that I remember ever being there is Hitler. I don't remember a time. Hitler. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like Austria you don't know in, in 1941. I don't remember a time before Hitler. Because you don't really just notice a picture of Jesus. It doesn't stand out to you as much as a picture of Hitler. Like, That's a memorable like a guy. Of Jesus in people's houses. But you throw a picture of Hitler up Jesus, somewhere that Jesus you're not comes expecting. Go, you're gonna but Hitler out walks out into times. a room. You're never going to forget that. Yeah. No. That is one to remember. Yeah, that's an all-time. That's a great. That's a great uh, prank. That was. Mm. God, that was hilarious. Jesus, great yawn, Matthew. I think that's I, you know I can't help it. I'll count that as one for today. The last episode, I think, what I go for like thirty-four yawns and one. I don't episode, know. Nobody was counting guy. but you. I counted, and based like on my next point, or I tried to bring this up earlier. One of the reasons I'm tired is no reason because I didn't do really anything all day. Woke up, made good breakfast, <laughs> hung out, good lunch, went to the golf range, hit some balls, and on the way home from the golf range, <laughs> I stopped at the mall. So this is the first time I've been in the mall since it's reopened. And I had to wait in line to get into... Wait, let me... Before I say that, I had a realization when I was in the mall that maybe coronavirus 
wasn't so bad for everyone after all. Not to make light of the people who died from it, but here's my theory. Hear me out. I had to wait in line for an extended period of time to get into a Crocs store. Jesus when is the Christ. last time that you think somebody had to wait in line to purchase a pair of Crocs? I couldn't even go in the store. Max capacity, 14 people. There was that many people that apparently didn't get the Croc fix and during coronavirus. So I st- stood in line, waited my time, went in there, bought a pair of Crocs, $47. $47 See you later. for and, a pair uh, of Crocs? Crocs are not cheap. Those are like the most basic Crocs. So you want a pair with a design on them? Sixty plus. Sixty plus dollars for Crocs. Yeah, I could make some in the backyard. Just give me like a, a you know the grill and what? like a bucket where I could heat up some rubber. They're just rubber little. But yeah, forty seven dollars. That's how much they run these days. Why did you buy that? I just don't. I haven't <laughs> seen anybody I'm like big wear fan Crocs of- <laughs> except for fucking Mario Batali since. God, I don't even know what year. Like two thousand. A lot of Six? a lot of the way that I dress is loosely based off my own. Yeah, the ponytail, um, the apron. You're always wearing an apron. <laughs> but I'm a big fan of shoes that require no. That you just slip them mm-hmm. on. You know, I wear my Birkenstocks almost every day. Sandals of any type. I have like a pair of Adidas style Birkenstocks. I just like to be able to slip my feet into things and be gone quickly. <laughs> and I think that Crocs are are coming back a little bit because they're comfortable, they're easy, and you know they've got a little little something going for them that I think uh, pretty soon you'll see people will be wearing Crocs. People are already wearing Crocs, but I'm saying more people will be wearing Crocs. Man, I believe. Well, at least me. <laughs> Okay, so the conclusion... I have nothing to add. Yeah, exactly. I have no (laughs) issue going to I know that. Absolutely not. And why why should you? I was just letting you know. That was just a ridiculous tangent on Crocs that just, like, I just... I couldn't even even pay attention to half of it. The whole conclusion of that story, (laughs) Matthew, was... (laughs) I'm wearing Crocs now. Fuck you. (laughs) Fuck both you. Because... Yeah, but I had to wait in line. But, like, there was the line for the Nike store... The line to get in the Nike store, I bet you people were waiting this line for like an hour and a half based off of how long it was, which is absolutely insane. Haven't you ever heard of the fucking internet? Like you could legitimately order anything from that entire store to your house. You'd never have to leave, but instead you'd rather go stand in line for an hour and a half with a mask on. Well, at this point, I, don't know. I think people just wanted to probably get out a little bit. I bet that was part get of it. Out. Which is fair. But I think I'd get frustrated. I'm not very patient. Well, you waited for Crocs. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> <for my laughs> yeah, you waited yeah, for Crocs. Yeah, fuck you guys. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you guys. That's all I'm saying is fuck you. I don't know. I think there's something about going to the mall that uh, people like. I don't know. I mean, uh, malls will go out of business eventually. But I feel I just I f- it's just uh, it's just different. I don't know why. Robin Styles wrote a whole song about it. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. You're tweaking over there, Andy. Great song. You're doing the same thing. This is what happens when you record the podcast remotely. Things all things all go out of out of whack. Sometimes yeah. it happens, but whatever. We'll keep plugging through it. Yeah, just fight through the delay. There we go. So Brian, what have you been up to lately? You've been doing I mean, during quarantine. How you been staying busy? Were you trying to do any, you know, film and stuff or what? What do you got? What what irons you got in the fire, man? I have not filmed anything since December. What month is it? But like? yeah, during quarantine, I've been sneaking out. I went to uh, the first like week of serious quarantine. I went to Eric Road Elementary School, the playground, and we tried to play mug a minute there and got too cold, so we went to Brooksy's house. But that was basically it. Just a lot of mugging and. Then it turned a little warmer and switched it to stack, and that's just what we've been doing. Stacking a lot of cups, which I don't think we can necessarily promote because it's not coronavirus conscious, but I will say that it is a game of champions, and it is not for the faint of heart. Yeah, you, it, I mean... It, it, do you know, I mean, you've played stack cup, Andy. For those of you who haven't played stack cup, I don't know, grow up. But It's like um, knockout. It's like knockout in basketball. 
Yeah. Except it's, uh, except it's you quite exciting. Except you don't get kicked out. You just have to uh, drink more. Yeah. And another thing that we came on to uh, was the um, musical chairs flip cup. Yeah, I like that um, one. Yeah. I just want to say, Andrew, I think we played it three times, three consecutive weekends. And I don't think that I ever lost one single time. Well, that's because I wasn't there, Matthew. I would love to debunk that really quick because I <laughs> did beat you. I did beat you. And right, let you me, wanted to shoot it let me because say, my cup rolled. But it was a unanimous victory. All right, well, and for, at the we bare minimum. The, right, we won the championship every time, and so is Stin too. But I did win the time I was there. So that's more impressive than going there twice and losing like Stin. But you do have two. So, reigning champion. <laughs> okay. Debatable. <laughs> Debatable. Here it's contest. No. I, mean, okay. I might never uh I might never lose that title. Come on, Matthew. But well, I'll show I don't up. know. I'll make an appearance. What? I'll make Fuck an you. appearance. I don't know what you're saying, but I'm still pissed off about this whole I'm still pissed off about this whole croc thing, to be <sighs> honest. I don't think that it, I was, you know, what I said really was valued whatsoever, and I don't know if I appreciate that by you two. Whatever little thing you two got going on over there, I, I don't know if I appreciate it. I think maybe I should just pop out for the episode. You were waiting in line at Nike when you waited in line at the Crocs store. That's how you started. But not for argue. nearly as long. That's what I was. My second point was just to pick up a get away from the whole Croc thing, because you guys apparently don't care about me or my interest, <laughs> was that. The Nike, the line for the Nike store was also very long. Okay, fuck you guys. I'm done with my mall talk. I mean, you can't just keep saying fuck you. Like you got, like you burned yourself. Like we didn't even talk, and you just went around in circles. <laughs> well, you responded by saying nobody. We don't give a shit. Pretty much. I'm pretty sure I heard the words Brian come out of his mouth saying he didn't even listen. He was doing something else to the side. I don't even know. Look, you got to expect sometimes I mean, when you thing- start talking about Crocs, people's brains are just gonna <laughs> shut off, Matthew. I'm tired. I've had like a long. I I'm just always tired, uh, and my brain. That's where it goes. It wants to talk about my my Crocs, and if you guys don't appreciate me for that, maybe I'll start another podcast strictly based <laughs> off Crocs. Crocs. I don't know you what to call it. I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna. Oh, I don't know. What I'm gonna call it Crikey. Craig Crocs. Crikey. Yeah, I don't know. Both good names. We'll I bet you I could find it. somebody out there that would be a co-host to me on a strictly Crocs podcast. Yeah, probably like a pedophile or something. There's, I feel like those are that's a pedophile shoe. <laughs> There's people out there with passion, all right? Yeah, Andy, passion for molesting passion children. Doesn't mean that we can't. That's who you're getting on your podcast. Hey, I just want to point out that <laughs> I don't molest children. <laughs> Because that seems to be what Andrew is getting not what at. I'm, no, so no, I'm not saying you. I'm saying that, f- you know, some of your fellow crack enthusiasts, you know, they might be, uh, they might be members of the church. The brand doesn't support child molestation, but they do understand that their footwear is both comfortable and convenient, <laughs> and sometimes people that molest children might want comfort and convenience that it has no correlation i'm sure people that molest children drink coke sometime and that's all you do is drink coke does that mean you rape kids too no this is a bad this is a bad tangent you got us pedophiles pedophiles drink tab soda everybody knows that that's the only thing pedophiles drink i have a question it kind of relates to both of you but mostly to brian oh no, okay. Sorry, I get ahead of myself. Yeah. Not about not no, croc okay. related though. But <laughs> one more time. You two you two and myself were obviously very big you know, we all like movies. It's something that I'd say we all have in common. You two probably more than anybody I know. What have you been doing, Brian, to get your movie fix in? Like there hasn't been a lot of big name movies coming out. There's one particular that we'll talk about after that. I know you saw, and Andrew and I both saw also, but what what have you been doing to kind of get your movie fix in? Like, a lot of trailers or re-watching, like, old ones? What, like, what have you been doing? How many times have I you re-watched. watched all the Marvel Universe movies? I have not watched Marvel, but I know you went to the drive-in, and they've been killing it. So I saw Indiana Jones and Back to the Future, which is incredible. Oh, that's a 
Good show. They're, they're on a big field. You see Jurassic Park and Jaws. Like they're they're yeah, on a field. Two of my favorite right movies now. of all time. And and Pete Davidson has been like the king of quarantine, dude. He's just dropping bangers after bangers. Yep, that's what I wanted I'm to get to. I wanted to bring up Staten Island Summer. King of Staten Island. I figured you picked up on that because. Yeah, I got the wink. That's also a great movie though. With Staten Island that's Summer. True. I don't know if anybody's. I know Andrew's seen it, but that movie's fucking circle. But yeah, King of uh, the King of Staten Island with Pete Davidson and Aunt May. Aunt May, Action Bronson. Oh my god, dude! Like, that's that was, something that I we mean, did not talk about was his cameo. Holy shit, dude! That was the best. That was the funny scene. Yeah, it was. Man, that guy, dude, I. I've barely watched... I've only seen, like, a couple episodes of Fuck That's Delicious. But I am all in on Action Bronson. I love that guy. He... Man. Just the way he, like, floats through life and, like... He's su- he's such a passionate guy. You know what? That's what it is. Me and, uh... Me, Blardy, Stin, and Rocco watched The Irishman at my house. And when he came on, he got a standing ovation from the entire movie theater. We loved it. It was incredible. <laughs> and I knew he was in it, but that movie was so long that you forget about yeah. it. But no, he's the best. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And his cameo in, in that in, uh, King of Staten Island was unreal. Um, did you know he had to... He, and Bill Burr crushed it. That oh, dude, Bill Burr is like... I mean, I've never seen him do something like that before. Like, he was so good. No, I mean... Like he's been in, yeah, he's uh, funny, dude. I love that guy. Yeah, he's a great guy. He's got a lot of good podcasts. He's a funny guy. Um, man, but even when, he, when Bill Burr was in like The Mandalorian, like who would expect to see him there? Yeah. And he... Yeah, that was weird. It, I mean, he even I thought that. it was... Like it was like John Favreau's idea. Like, it's on Star Wars. Yeah. So they like that. Yeah. Oh, uh, my shit's being real late. Nah, it's just, right it's now. just Sorry, Brian. It's just Brian's cutting saying. out a little bit. Mm. It's all right. That's the way it goes. Nice, dude. Thanks for coming Is out and me? fucking us up, man. Yeah, just. Dude, I'll go. I'll leave right now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like no you're more than welcome. I will. <laughs> not to get off. I actually have two things to say. And neither of them are really on topic. But back to what you said. I like that you said the entire movie theater got a standing ovation because <laughs> I know that you guys are just watching it in your basement. That. <laughs> Which yeah. is pretty much a movie theater, but still, that was I liked that. And two, I like that you have a bottle of Admiral Nelson on the bar behind you. If that's uh, that's that's a that's a good drink of choice. Like that's thank you. you know, Should I? Yeah, I'm not gonna touch it. I'm not gonna touch it. One I'm thing for it. the viewers, the viewers that are listening. <laughs> yeah, that's a bad idea. One thing for the viewers <laughs> that are listening to this that they probably don't know is Brian has one of the coolest basements, probably ever. Uh. It's got everything you could possibly need in the basement. He's got a full bar area, a, f- a full gym area, like a movie watching section, pretty much a, a, a golf practice facility, and then just an entire room of some of the coolest movie, specifically superhero, like um, collector's items and action figures that you could possibly have. Andrew, you would probably... You would probably enjoy it if I had to guess. Not the gym so much, but definitely the um. Co- oh, the, dude, the I have collectible that. stuff. I don't go in that <laughs> section of the basement ever. It's just covered in dust. What do you? What do you? Uh, if I mean, what yeah, do you got true. down there? Like some of the uh, memorabilia or collectibles or whatever you got, Brian. So, like in the movie room, is like. There's, like, props. So I got, like, a Thanos glove. Like, I'm looking at a Captain America shield, a Thor hammer, like, stuff like that, like, helmets. And then, like, all these, like, figures in, like, this, like, separate little closed-off section that just my dad's just been getting for, like, ever. Like, uh, like what? Because I noticed you have some some sports figures in the back. It looks like, like, hockey and, uh, and football. Oh, shit. We're getting a camera turn. It's like that little hallway. Yeah. <laughs> is that a little hallway right there? Yeah. Camera turn. It goes deep, and it's just like, there's like a Spider-Man wall, like all different versions of Spider-Man, then like his villains. Whoa. And then we got Batman over to the right. A couple Robins, you know, then his villains. I see, you know, Scarecrow hanging out. Just stuff like that. It's an Avengers wall on the other side. 
that sounds awesome. I mean, I know you live there, so you're saying it kind of nonchalantly, but I'm listening. I'm like, holy shit. Like, I got to. No, no, I'm, I'm being honest about it for sure. It's a, it's incredible. I stare at it all the time. We love, we love humility. <laughs> and Andrew's got, Andrew's got, Andrew's uh, girlfriend allowed him the, the top corner of one little bookshelf where he puts a uh, little Yoda it. and a little Woody. And this is only, this That's is only for the only thing like Andrew it. decorated in the house. What do you say, Brian? <laughs> she only lets you keep. What do you think that Andy tattoo? Yeah, this is something I that, bring up all the time to my friends that, that you still won't let me do is tattoo Andy on the bottom of your foot. Oh, book. yeah. Look, I just don't want it. I mean, it's I like it's a funny idea. But, like, why, the, the thing is, is, like, who's going to see it unless you show them? No, I don't care about anybody seeing it. And that's it. such a good talking point, and your name is yeah. Andy, and you love, I Toy, love Story. Toy Story. How do you not have... I love Toy Story. There's Toy Story in that movie room, too. I should have mentioned that. There's, you know, I got a hoverboard in there, too. Back to the Future. But, yeah, there's a Toy Story wall. It's the best. Toy Story is the best. Yeah, absolutely. I grew up on Toy Story. Oh, yeah. that's. I'm getting Andy on the bottom of my phone. Andrew... And it doesn't really make sense for me. <laughs> well, maybe it does. Maybe it does. Because it's actually a little selfish. Andy doesn't have Andy on his foot. The toys have Andy. So why would Andy get Andy on the foot? Yeah, Matthew, you get Andy on there. Because that's a good tattoo for you. Fuck you. I'll get Andy if you get Andy. Why would I get Andy? I'm not getting your name tattooed on the bottom of my foot. That's what I'm hearing. I'm getting... Fuck Andy, he hates Crocs on the bottom of my foot. Okay, please do, because it would be accurate, and I'm not shy about that opinion. <laughs> yeah, you should do that. Fuck Andy, hates Crocs on the Toy Story references. That should be on the bottom of your All foot. All right. Go fund me. Starts now. I'd probably need only like $200 to get that tattoo. Yeah, I don't know if that's worth it. Go fund Start it up, you. Andy. It is for me because I don't want to pay for it, but I'll do it because it's All funny. Right, fair enough. We can get that going. That is funny. But you won't even get Andy tattooed on the bottom of your foot. I could do it. I've said for years that I would buy a tattoo gun on Amazon. You can buy a tattoo gun on Amazon for $70 with all the different colors. and I will tattoo that on the bottom of your foot. I will pay the $70, buy the gun, tattoo that shit on your foot. I don't like that one bit. And you, like, there's zero downfall. For one. You. There's no, there's only positives. Okay, two things. One, uh, I don't like your handwriting. Two, you can't even fucking read, so how are you going to spell Andy tattooing it on somebody? What do you mean, spell that's Andy? Even better, though? That's even better, though. you fucking idiot. Like, like how bulls I had? That'd be even better if you had a Danny on the bottom. That's of a deep cut. That's a little Easter egg for the, for the people. <laughs> that's how you know you're a real fan, though. You know what? I'm going to agree with that. I like that a lot, actually. Anybody, any schmuck... You know, can say they can they can talk the talk like, oh, I like Toy Story. I have Andy on the bottom of my foot. But no, you want that bullseye deep cut to really, really show off to the people. But you like that five second scene where he accidentally had Danny. That's like how you know. Mm -hmm. That's a big yeah. That's a great part. It's like for people to recognize that you okay. This guy, this guy knows what he's talking about. He's not just like. Watching Toy Story in the background. This guy. He's not just any guy named Andy. He's not any guy named Andy. That's right. He's looking. He's rewinding the VHS tape back in the day over and over. Rewatching the damn thing. Classic. R.I.P. R.I.P. to the VHS. Think about him every day. Andy, I have a. Not to uh, not to switch this up from the movie topic, but I did want to ask you, just going into the pod, I was thinking about this. Um, did you see the the NBA bubble court? I did not see the court. No, but the Nets are playing right now. Um, they're down. They're getting killed by the Pelicans. It's just a scrimmage, but they're getting absolutely destroyed. The third quarter just ended. Yeah. But no, I've I've not seen the, um, I've not seen the bubble court. Ha, uh, you should look it up. It's pretty cool. There's been a bunch it a looks like a video walk. game. I was gonna watch that. Someone's walking around like yeah. vlogging it. I haven't seen that, but I have seen uh well, because all the media members are in there now. So I just I think that it's a kind of a cool take on like as as shitty as it may be that there's no fans and stuff like that, you kinda get an even more behind the take 
behind the scenes take because that's all there is to focus on right like all these reporters have to do now that they're in the bubble is just try to pump out as much content as possible and i'm not even that big of an nba fan but i know that andy is and and brian i know just you're just a sports fan in general like I think that it's going to be pretty fucking cool to see what happens. What? Okay, so Andy, here's is it like in a big to, hotel conference away from room? the court situation? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I see that. I'm pretty sure. If that's oh. what I'm looking at right now, I mean, I don't know if. Why wow, are you looking it up right yeah, now? Yeah, I just checked it out. I don't know. It's all like the whole thing is like just video screens oh. and like. That I'm not seeing. I don't know. It's pretty fucking cool. Well, at least they got something right in there. I don't know. I'm looking at it right now, too, again. What are you going to do? I mean, how would you live in a bubble? It probably sucks ass. Yeah, I'm just saying. I mean, we were talking about it the other day. They're not making it any easier on these guys with, like, the fucking Firefest meals that they were giving them and stuff. I mean, you can't. Yeah. You can't feed the elite athletes that, you know. I mean, that looks wor- that looks like something, you know, you go to, like, a, a school like chicken dinner fundraiser million times better than the pictures they were getting in the in the NBA bubble like Chevetta's and I and that sounds like I'm shitting on Chevetta Chevetta's I mean that's number 1 like you have to have at least Chevetta's or better if you're going to give them that kind of you know little styrofoam little fucking uh, potato salad scooping that in there for these guys I mean can you even imagine Trying to cut it with plastic, trying to get in there with plastic silverware, and it's just bending and Jesus stabbing Christ, through the styrofoam. Yeah. I mean, it's a shit show, but they didn't. It's not like they had all this time to put it together. They, you know, they got to fucking, they got to be making money at the end of the day. That's what it's all about, you know. And that's I'm excited. Actually, today is technically considered, and the only reason I know this is because of a podcast that I was listening to earlier. Is, um sports being back eve tomorrow the mlb officially starts real games regular season baseball starts tomorrow and then it's all everything takes off from there so hopefully the world starts to return back to semi normal i can't wait for the nhl season to start when it does start there's like six games a day stacked from like 2 p.m to 10 p.m and it's just going to be hockey game hockey game hockey game and i don't know if I'll leave a TV for like four days, I think I'm going to get a cooler, put like 600 beers in it and just sit there for as long as I can. Maybe throw on a diaper. <laughs> yeah. Hey, why is that funny? Because you're wearing a diaper and you don't need a Both diaper. You, yo, for those of you who can't see, for those of you who cannot see this right now and are just listening to it, there's like a little fucking conspiracy going on right now <laughs> between Brian and Andrew. You infer that you're going to wear a diaper in front of a TV for days, we laugh, and then you get offended by it. What do you want us to do? <laughs> He's weird. No, there's not Matthew. like a laugh like that was funny. Sitting in this basement, like a, watching hockey, if they wearing were in nothing the same... but a diaper and a pair of Crocs. <laughs> it's like diaper, if you guys were in the same room. Two beers and the straws sticking out. That's his fit. Yeah. Life. That's all you need. <laughs> See, to me, that sounds like the life. You guys are shitting on it, but I could easily do that for four days. If you guys were sitting in the same room right now, you'd be shooting each other like side eye glances like the whole time. That's pretty much what you're doing just via fucking video chat. And I don't know how I feel about it. I'm not going to lie. I have. I mean, even though I know that he can't tell where I'm looking, I have been shooting Brian glances probably throughout this entire recording. It's weird because I've been giving his looks. I've felt them. Exactly. Matthew, you can't blame us because we have a connection. Okay. All right. That expands, uh, you know, space. I, I, I. all right, I didn't mean I don't want you I to feel that offended. Now. I'm just saying. I didn't know coming into it that I was gonna be, I was gonna be under pressure. Like Jesus, <laughs> um, no pressure, no okay, pressure. Yeah. Always getting so defensive. Wanna, what do you want to do, Andy? What do you, what do you want to do? You want to do a little uh, who would win, or you got what? Else, what else you got? We can wait. No, I'm ready to go, go to who would where, win. Where are you going from here, Brian? What do you say? I want to hear what you have to say, Andy. I'm I'm done talking for the rest of the episode. You're not gonna say. Okay, fine. Is the is the guest supposed to go first? No, no, we were just asking well, if you're, if you're well, into all right, it. Sorry, if you're I ready lied. to go, we'll go for who yeah. will win. I mean, that doesn't mean, like, uh, we're not wrapping up or anything. I'm just saying if we're ready to go, jump into the who would win. No, no, I understand. I'm just saying. Like, well, I don't uh, know who's supposed to go first. I feel like that's just not how it goes. We got, no. we got uh, who would win of the week this week. 
we kind of had on the back burner last week. We almost we almost pulled it out last week, but we kind of held off, and we're getting into it today. A little uh, on the obscure side, but I think that there's a lot to think about. And I also, okay, it is a Spider-Man ice cream bar from your local ice cream truck. With the gumball eyes, that's very important. A Choco Taco. With the gumball eyes. Spider-Man gumball eyes are very gumball important. Eyes. With the gumball eyes versus a Choco that's Taco. Right. We got to make it very clear. I'm very opinionated on really. this. Because I think I know who's taking it. Yeah. Uh, me okay. too. So. We're going to disagree. Aren't I think we, we might. <laughs> and I want to know what Brian said. Because we were talking about it earlier. And I. I can only guess. I can only guess what Brian's going to pick. But I was, I've been worried all day that I was going to get, you know, ganged up on kind of like your Croc situation, I guess, Matthew, um, for this, for this who would yeah, win. Yeah, now you know what it feels like. Well, we'll see. Um, Brian and I have such a connection, he might end up coming over to my side. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like this is one more than ever that we've got to make it clear. It's not like which one you know, tastes better. It's not which one would you order off of the ice cream truck board. Because that's also obvious. It's let's say... <laughs> that's not even an argument. It's let's say these two items, these two delicious ice cream uh, items got into a fight. Which one would come out victorious? And the answer, from my perspective, for the people at home... Is that Spider-Man with the gumball eyes has taken this one? Now I know that may sound shocking. Before you before you explain, how about before you explain? I want to hear what Brian has to say, and I want to hear his reasoning why. Okay. I'm going taco. Fair enough. Because that's it's not. And I and I knew you thought I would go Spider-Man because that just seems no. Like I thought you were going thing. taco. I am feeling. Oh, you did? Mm-hmm. Okay, because this reminds me so much of the, the hot rod question. The hot rod right. scene! Fucking right! That is the only scientific fact on this current fight. Thank so you so much, Brian. Not a fair fight means the taco is going to take this one. The taco wins every time. Everybody knows that, and this isn't racist, even though it wasn't hot rod, but a taco wins in the street fight every time. Prison rules, taco. This isn't a regular taco, though. This is a Choco Taco. It's a Choco Taco. That <laughs> Which should just further the point. Yeah, that just furthers my point. I disagree. I, do, I mean, I'm not... I think if, if you're looking deeper, I think the only way Spider-Man has a chance is that it, it won't melt as fast. Oh, I didn't even consider melting in the at taco all. taco has that outer shell of protection, though. The taco has an outer shell of protection. Has gumball eyes. He, yes, so to, Brian, to Brian's point about the gumball eyes, with the... I'm just playing devil's advocate, but I am going to... So, oh boy, this is going to be your, good. What's your theory behind the gumball the eyes? with the gumball eyes, which I'm glad you brought that up, because let's compare the gumball eyes with the crunchy shell of the Choco Taco. Those... Is there... Any harder substance on the planet Earth than those fucking gumballs right out of the freezer? Anything. And do, a scientists have been trying to figure that out forever. They've been in the lab with diamonds and gumball eyes from these ice cream treats. And the gumball eye wins every time. Counterpoint. A gumball eye could crack that puny taco shell like... Boom. It could completely split it apart. It's not even a factor at that point. Okay. So hear this. Counterpoint, because you just fucking ruined your own argument, you moron. If Spider-Man's, if Spider-Man's using his eyes as weapons, <laughs> even if they do damage the hard exterior of the taco, two eyes isn't taking out the whole taco. Now Spider-Man's left with no eyes. Okay, here we go. He has no eyes now. Listen to me. Listen to me. First of all, Spidey sense. He doesn't need his eyes, Matthew. I I knew you were going to come back with Spidey sense. sense. Okay? We can just assume that the ice cream bar in this case, if it has working gumball eyeballs, it has the Spidey sense. (laughs) So it doesn't need it. What was that other thing that you said? But but the, the, 
the Peter Tingle is not tingle. resisting, is not holding off the taco. The taco oh, is going to come in there. This goes back. I just want to say, I just want to say. What? What you said about the gumball eyes, it doesn't need to destroy the whole sh- whole shell. All you need is a chink in the armor, and the taco's done for. That's all you need. It's like Smaug. It's like how Smaug had that one little scale. Now we're getting real... Now we're getting into the good nerd stuff here. It's like how Smaug had that one loose, you know, the one chink, and that's all they needed. That's all they needed. That's all Spider-Man needs is one chink in the Chaco Taco exterior, and it's game over. So Spider-Man can sacrifice not. He can sacrifice one. Yeah, he absolutely can. Go down, okay, so even if he goes down one, my whole thing is, and Brian brought it up instantly. He took the words out of my mm-hmm. mouth. In the movie Hot Rod, there was a similar conversation. I believe it's a taco versus grilled cheese, mm-hmm. correct? Correct. We're all men of science. We're all familiar. Burrito. It's broken down very simply. I, it's broken down very, very simply that in a fight with no rules, a taco wins. And to Brian's point, the Chaco portion of the taco only enhances his ability to absolutely tune Spider-Man up. Here's my thing. We'll give him the eyeballs. We'll give him the Spidey sense. But he doesn't have web, does he? No, it's a popsicle, Matthew. Don't be ridiculous. Exactly. (laughs) Don't be ridiculous. So there's no way... (laughs) So there's no way he's holding the taco back. There's just no way. And another counterpoint I just thought of. This taco is just such a fucking hardo that if Spider-Man gives up an eye cracks the shell, I am almost positive that the taco would sack up, take a piece of that cracked shell, and use it as a shank. That's a curious point. Okay, I can see that. That's exactly right. I can, That's exactly right. Yeah. I can see that happening. Like, Spider-Man okay. shoot, Spider-Man's using that eye thing, and this taco's so fucked, and the taco stumbles back a little bit, gets a little, gets, gets a little angry, pulls off that piece of broken shell, and... And charges him with a knife. And and at that point, Spider Man's just down one eye. Maybe his, his He doesn't maybe he need got, any you know? eyes. I've seen the Spidey Sense fail. But but mm-hmm. sometimes so Don't it, get me it happens. Don't sometimes get me on that Spidey Sense. You know, maybe he had a maybe that Spider Man ice cream maybe that Spider Man ice cream had kind of a tough day. And for whatever reason Spidey sense is just a little bit off, and he can't find it at that point in time. You've seen that happen in Spider-Man movies, correct? Okay. The yes, the answer is yes. It's a little. It's a little. Yeah, usually the second one. You yeah, the second one he always loses. Portion of the second act. <laughs> yeah, yeah, almost completely. You're telling me that if that happens to this ice cream, and he runs into a choco taco, that choco taco is not twisting him up like a pretzel and cutting him into a thousand pieces. So if this goes a savage, he doesn't give a fuck. Act of this Spider-Man's life, he's just losing instantly. That's not true because even okay, this is this is a big point that I wanted to bring up, Matthew. You were just talking, you know, speaking to the resilience of the choco taco. Um, and what is resilience really? But something learned through hardship, you know, getting back up again. And, and who, I ask you, has had a tougher life than the Spider-Man popsicle with the gumball eyes? Now, how many times have you, from the ice cream truck, gotten a Spider-Man with the gumball eyes, a uh, Tweety Bird, a Ninja Turtle with the gumball eyes... And it's got one eye up on the forehead and another eye down by the chin. Okay. They have a rough go, but it never stops them. Not once. How many fucking lazy eyed popsicles have you seen in your lifetime? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to the taste. They are, there is no deterring a popsicle with the gumball eyes. A popsicle with the gumball eyes has seen it all, ladies and gentlemen. Nothing will stand in its way, okay? Not a lazy eye, not freezer burn, and certainly not a Choco Taco. Can I change my answer? I knew it! I knew it! God. Oh my God. This is this episode is fucking rigged. They set me up from the start. 
Andy had Welcome a fucking to the team. conspiracy. Welcome to the team. Andy said three weeks back, <clears throat> Andy was in the shower three weeks ago, and he said, I think that I'm going to do a Who Would Win of the Week, Choco Taco versus Spider-Man uh, Popsicle. And he said, who can I bring on? And the entire episode, we can just lead up to the fact that we're just going to abuse Matt until it's no long. Like, you, you try to set me up to lose a Who Would Win of the Week? How long have you been planning this? Dude, this I about, started with This you. is ridiculous. <laughs> but I'm like all... I know, started. but here's the thing. is You didn't finish with me. It's not about where you start. It's about where you finish. And here's the thing. Usually, this is the point in time where I would get frustrated and I would say, you know what? Leave it up to social media. But I don't even trust social media because there's only one person that I think is proven to have really thought about this debate and that is Andy Samberg and if Andy Samberg doesn't weigh in on this then the correct answer is forever the Choco Taco Matthew the more I think about it the more I see that once that shell is gone it's over and that's not the shell's not gonna be gone the the shell isn't even the right move if Spider-Man was really thinking he would probably go in through the top where it's just the chocolate because if he uses if he goes for the shell the like i said the taco is going to now have a weapon okay well exactly i mean i'm not a spider-man strategist so i don't know what he's doing so like he might as well just be doing that he can jump so hot he's probably thinking that right now (laughs) so thank you matt thank you matthew for that argument and we needed that that does but either way, I'm still taking... No. Fuck you guys. <laughs> this is my favorite You want to know how you know ever. an argument is strong? You want to know how an argument... You want to know how you know an argument is strong? Is when you can give your opponents a better strategy that they could even come up with, and you're still confident in the points that you've made that the taco is going to win this fucking fight. But when push comes... Okay, but what do you have for the taco? Anything? Yeah, I have science. <laughs> What's his, be plan, hot rod. what's his play if Spider-Man doesn't go for the shell? Because as of right now, his only play is hoping that Spider-Man breaks his shell. That's all he's got right now. So if we don't do that, then what? If Spider-Man doesn't go for the shell, then his most likely play is probably going to be, like you said, jump up, try to attack the taco from below. Taco goes... Uh, scared turtle style, roll over, roly poly style, shell uh-huh. down. Spider Man can't access. But we've the shell. already is- only choice is to try to go through the shell, which we've established he can what? easily do. What go yes, through the with shell? Yes, the gumball eyes, the steel diamond gumball eyes. Yeah, but then he gets, but then he gets the shank. Then the taco is now equipped with the shank. And Spider-Man doesn't have web. All he can do is jump around at this point. So you're saying Spider-Man's going to jump back and forth for four hours while this taco reaches up and tries to stab him? Eventually, Spider-Man's going to get tired. And now he's only got one eye. So maybe he tries to use the second one. What did you say, Brian? Did you say it one more time? I said if if we're lasting four hours in this fight, then that taco's already melted. And Spider-Man's fine. He has one missing eye. Here's the thing. Spider-Man's melted too! No, no. Those things take... They take a while to start to, like, fall apart and actually melt. Here's the thing. <coughs> if, even if you give, you know, even if the shell breaks and Spider-Man um, gets stabbed with a, a piece of shell shank, TM. If Spider-Man gets stabbed with a piece of, of shell shank, what's that really going to do to his type of popsicle? See, you pierce the hide of the Chaco Taco... And it begins to drizzle, drizzle. It begins to leak out the hole. You pierce the soft, ample skull that is the Spider-Man gumball pop skull. And it kind of goes right. It passes through without harm. <laughs> He's basically invincible. I have, an in, I, have an insensitive, I have an insensitive comment to make. Okay. Are you going to um, make it? Or? From one of the foremost, ex, from one of the foremost experts in um, being stabbed that I know. And it's my buddy Brian. Uh, um, if the Choco Taco slices the Spider-Man, there's a potential ability for that Spider-Man head popsicle to be completely cut in half. 
you're forgetting something. There's also there's also that burst of adrenaline that you are not ready for, and that Spider Man is gonna go ape shit after that. But that's what the Choco Taco is gonna get when his shell cracks. That's true. They both so they both have that code. So code. now we're playing a game of who has more adrenaline. No, no, no. we're not. We're not. Playing and the that answer game. to that is we don't know. Here's a, okay. Seems like the game we're playing. If you're talking playing. about slicing in half, you're forgetting. And I would still side with Spider Man's, you know, balsa wood popsicle stick skeleton that's going to stop the shank before it can go all the way through. I imagine though that most Choco Tacos come from a rather. You talked about the resiliency of the Spider-Man popsicle. In my opinion, most Choco Tacos probably come from some type of um, rough upbringing as well. Maybe a cartel background. <laughs> I'm sure that they have ways to cut through balsa wood fucking sticks inside of side of a Spider-Man popsicle. Not by popsicle physics, Matthew. You're forgetting we're we're talking about ice cream physics here, and I don't think you're taking them into account. I don't, I think you're underestimating this Choco Taco. I think that no, you I'm not are so caught up in the fact that because let's be quite honest. From a Spider-Man perspective, as a young Spider-Man, in the in the Marvel Universe, there was a lot of times where, if not for Tony Stark, Spider-Man would probably not have been able to cut it. Would you agree with that? I would. I wouldn't agree with that. I would disagree so with you're that. you're saying that... The whole that's point it. of those iron, early Spider-Man movies are to show that he can do it without help. That's... Yeah, but I'm not necessarily talking about the Spider-Man movie. Well, okay, then how about this? Okay, so even that. I was talking about just... Okay. Okay. In this situation, is uh, who built Ice Cream Spider-Man's suit? Ice Cream Spider-Man doesn't have Is it have an Iron Spider suit? That's a good question. He doesn't Let's have a suit! At, mm, is it an Iron Spider suit? No, I don't think so. Just based on... The <laughs> coloration around the eyes. If I had to guess what it most closely no. resembles, it would be a. Uh, God, what the hell is his name? It's either. Hold on, I'm gonna make sure it's right. To- Toby Maguire. No. It's something from Ben Riley. Yes, Ben Riley. Thank you, Brian. Oh. It's it mo- gotcha. doesn't it look more like a like a Ben Riley like Spider Man mask? Yeah, it's like the hoodie on. Yeah, exactly. The, I mean, the right shade of blue. Yes. So he's getting fucking diced up by this shank. Oh my god. See you later, Spidey Popsicle. I don't think so, Matthew. He's getting sliced. Let's... I spent this whole day on the side of the Choco Taco, too. That's what's funny about this. But, like I said, there's only one person in my mind who I respect their opinion in this argument, and that would be... Andy Samberg, and you two can both politely go crawl in a hole and die. Because this whole episode was set up for you two to do your little thing and then gang up on me. No matter what I've talked about, the internet can decide, but everybody knows that the internet sucks ass and the only person that I will... (laughs) I'm, I'm going to do my best to contact Andy Samberg and see what he has to say about this. And we'll if he takes the side of the... I'll make a wager right now. I'll make a wager. If we can get a hold... No. Oh, uh, yeah. If we can get a hold of Andy Samberg and he comes to me and he says that the Spider-Man Pop School would win this fight... I'll do anything you two ask me for an entire day. Okay, deal. Yeah, all right, deal. <laughs> That's how confident I am I any- that the foremost expert of this <laughs> field will prove that I am on the correct side of this argument. And I'm sure that he won't. And that brings me to my closing art- argument. I said, let's wrap this. Let's go around the horn and give some final thoughts here. My closing argument is that the Chaco Taco is the softer, in spirit, the softer cousin to the typical taco. I mean, what taco do you think is a better fighter? The traditional uh, beef, 
a sort of zestier, spicy taco or a dessert taco? Let's be real. And counterpoint. Hold on, hold on. I'm just finishing up here. And Fuck. for all of the reasons that <laughs> uh, myself and Brian have stated here, the Spider-Man popsicle through strength and resilience of spirit is the one that would win this particular who would win of the week. Counterpoint. Who better to fight ice cream than ice cream, Andrew? You talked about ice cream physics. I'm sure that regular tacos aren't as up to date on their ice cream physics. Ice cream, there's only one person who can fight ice cream, and that is ice cream. And this is two ice creams going at it. And, counterpoint, what do you think... I don't know the right word, words to say this. Ice cream versus... Popsicle, ice cream, I think is a better substance. Popsicle is what? Sugar and water? I don't know. I don't make them. I just eat them. Probably. It's like a f- I, yeah, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just like to fight them. I don't know. My, my, I don't know. Fuck you guys. I'll say it. I've said that like 30 times this episode, but I'm going to continue to say it until it ends because I really do think that this was a conspiracy. I'm going to put on my little fucking aluminum foil hat and go to sleep later and try not to think about all that's happened today because I think that it was a little unfair. Brian, closing points. Not that they fucking matter because the taco would win, but let's hear them. The taco will not win. I think once you gave Spider-Man his Spidey sense, you lost. You gave him everything. You gave us all of our arguments. We didn't have to even argue. We like we just listened to you talk in circles once again about the Croc line, which you said is incomparable to the Nike line. You helped us out. It's not comparable. These are two different Man, things. You and I already counselor, said it. Counselor, please, you, take- counselor, please. Let's have some order while Brian finishes off his final argument. No, please. fuck order. This is ridiculous. No arguments done. That's it. I just wanted to fire Matt up a little bit. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens on Twitter. That actually reminds me. Let me double check this because our last last week's Who Would Win of the Week was a good one. OJ versus Zodiac Killer Ted Cruz. Um, and uh, what the? Ooh, yeah. So since that episode... Came out, Ted Cruz has not posted anything on social media. As of right now, Ted Cruz has not posted anything on social media. Because he knows that the truth is out there. It's not so much an I said you so moment. Yeah, but it's, um, wait, now I have to, fuck. Now I have, first of all, I'm so, fuck you guys. Oh, he's so I know. Just. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so how about this? There's one thing that Andrew forgot to mention when he brought up that whole last week's Who Would Win of the Win, and we left it to Twitter. Um, did you look at the poll, Andrew? Yes. Did you happen to see the poll? OJ won on both Instagram and Twitter. On Twitter, it was 100% OJ, 0% Ted Cruz. So obviously Andrew has a pretty shitty track record of picking who would actually win of the week. So Brian, one last chance to reconsider who you're taking. You're sticking with Spider-Man. You're coming back to Taco side. I'm going Gumball Eyes, yeah. I think that's my side. You're going Gumball Eyes. All right, well, listen. There's a reason reason that not everybody can always come in first, and that's because it's always me. So you guys have fun in second place and know that if I ever figure out a way to fight a Choco Taco versus Spider Man ice cream, I'll send you guys. I'll, I'll send you guys. I won't even make you guys pay for the pay per view. I'll 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 pick it up on my tab, and I'll let you guys watch my taco beat the shit out of your stupid little popsicle. And that's all I have to say on that. Oh, I can't wait to see these polls. History, <laughs> history will tell. History will show the victor, as it always does. And always uh, 
Yeah, and always will. Uh, <laughs> moving on from that, we got a little time left here, and I want to talk to more um, with Brian about uh, movies. Um, and Matthew, I hope that you'll jump in. So, I mean, so Brian, obviously you you make movies, you make videos, and you have also seen a lot. Was is there a particular moment? Because I assume you got inspired when you were real young. Is there a particular moment or a particular not even movie, but like scene or shot in a movie? that really sort of put you over the edge and you kind of realize like, oh, this gives me, this is that thing that gives me that certain feeling that I'm looking for. Yeah, it was, um, you ever see that iCarly episode where he's doing a stop motion video? I don't know what you're talking about. I fucking love this answer. I have no idea, but holy (laughs) shit. But I had all those action videos and I'm like, I can probably make a stop motion movie too. I'm like, that seems easy enough. So you did it. Sidebar, Andy, before you continue. <laughs> answer that question. Did you do it? Answer that question first. I have a sidebar though. Quick sidebar. I 100% did it. <laughs> and it turned out What fantastic. was the uh, premise of that one? It was... A bunch of action figures climbing up my basement staircase and then falling down them. That's like some, like, train coming into the station shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's what that feels like. That's like the stop motion, like, version of that. Like, it's, yeah. uh... Oh, yeah. It's simple, but it's beautiful. And then But it's beautiful. Oh, my God. My family loved it. <laughs> that's what that's great that's who your first audience my is sidebar all the time. go ahead Matthew can, can right. I can I spit out my sidebar real quick I actually feature in some of Brian's work it was my first ever nude role in a film yeah um, <laughs> um I feel like the last few episodes we've been talking about me uh not having a lot of clothes on lately but yeah we were at uh all you need is Crocs really. Shirks and Shores Resort buddy of ours has a place up there and um there was a scene in the, uh, it was a vlog. There was a scene in the vlog where, um, my rear end was showing. And I like to think that that's kind of, you know, why the video got as much love as it did. I'm not sure that that's why, but that's what I'm going to take into perspective. Um, as we talked about last week, I'm a pretty damn good actor. Not a great reader, but I can We have been talking, but you did shine in Brian Fletcher's 007 vlog on YouTube. I mean, you absolutely stop. What did you? I think you won the 007 game. So not to you keep gave Amber the greatest shout out you ever had. Oh, she knew. First of all, 007, great game for anybody who doesn't know it. And not to bring this up, but it's just another game that, for some reason, in this circumstance, I was uh, I was the victor in. I don't know. It seems it seems weird to keep saying, but for some reason, every story that gets told on here, I feel like I'm I'm usually coming in first place. And that goes back to my taco theory. That that's probably correct. But um, Amber Fleischman, I don't know if she will ever come across any two in the cooler content but if she does i will fully endorse anything she ever wants me to endorse she put on one of the greatest showings that is what a high school party could be ever in life and i'll never forget that moment thank you amber fleischman andrew back to your movie questions Sorry yeah for getting you. off topic <laughs> no problem it was uh <laughs> so uh can people find that uh, 007 video, is that still around? Oh, yeah. Oh, you type in Brian Fletcher, 007, the thumbnail is, in fact, Matthew Kansas' asshole. Okay, so you have to look up, you have to look this up on Pornhub if you really want to see it. <laughs> it's age restricted. You need an account, it's, you need to be 18 it's plus. Not like, yeah, you can watch. I'm not, like, I'm not spreading cheek or anything. I don't think. <laughs> you were spreading. Oh. <laughs> Jeez. No, cheeks were spread. Cheeks were spread, bud. <laughs> hey, 
listen, you got to be comfortable with your body. That's, you know, it's all it is. It's all it comes down to. That's absolutely correct. Sorry, Mom. <laughs> no, you should, you should be very comfortable with your body. That's two in the cooler's <laughs> message of uh, body positivity for, to, for, uh, for this episode. <laughs> now, uh, thankfully, we've, we've gotten that out of the way. Um, Matthew asked about uh, how you're getting your movie fix. He asked you that earlier in the podcast. Um, what I'm curious about is, you know, what do you think the future of theaters is going to be? I'm interested to get your opinion. Oh, dude, I'm so scared that there's not going to be movie theaters. I don't know. I mean, like, I'm so optimistic. So, like, I'm just like, oh, no, like, we'll be fine. There's enough people that enjoy going to the movie theater. But, like, even, like, now I'm just like, dude, I can watch it at home. Like, it sucks because I want to go there. And, like, Marvel is the only thing holding this up right now. Marvel and, like, five or six directors. You're saying that those are the only ones that are, uh, like, poised yeah. to, like, stand by going, theaters to make a Making comeback? people go. Yeah. 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 That's a good, man, that's a good point. I think it's going to be, yeah, it'll be weird. Maybe they'll just be, like, less movies that they have available that go to theaters. That would make a lot of sense, I think. It's just so easy to watch everything at home. Yeah, what, that's, like, the only thing you do. But, like, I don't get how drive-ins are so, like, you go to the drive-in, you see that they're going extinct. Like, I go, the drive-in's awesome. Like, why is that, like, hated on? So, like, I see movies. I love the drive-in. Yeah. I don't know why the drive-in. You had a drive-in date. Yeah. I have a question. I have a question kind of off of that for both of you, Andy. So say that does happen. Say movie theaters become to be phased out and they kind of adapt to this thing that's been going on in quarantine where you pay a premium, like more a more expensive price, like $20 to rent a movie within your home. How is that going to affect the way that they compare movies to each other based off the amount of revenue that they come in. Both, I mean, I'm just curious. Like, what what do you think about that? Like, Both how are they gonna? How's it gonna change how they measure the success of a movie? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, because you know, a lot of times, a lot of movies. That's the thing. Like, this movie made X amount of money in opening mm-hmm. weekend. How are you gonna? Yeah. How do you like, movies make that like a box office that made that much money now that make box office money to a movie that is going to be shown in homes. And on top of that, does, is that going to affect the way that movies are budgeted and the way that they're shot and how much actors are paid and stuff like that? How much trickle-down effect is this going to have, do you think? Well, I think that <clears throat> the interesting thing is when you buy a ticket at a movie theater, an incredibly small percentage of that money actually goes to the theater most of that goes to the studio and when you are you know sending a movie at home or you know an at-home release and it's you know twice as much as you would pay for a ticket you know about i mean they have to split that maybe with you know Amazon or some sort of video on demand thing. Um, I don't know how they split that up, but that's more money, and I assume that more of it is going right to the studio. So, but I don't know. Here's here's what but I think here's is the, uh, but because when I have watched right because you have to buy a ticket per person. But a bunch of people can watch the movie. Yeah, that's that so. Was my point. I would say that. I mean, Amazon, you know, your cable box that has video on demand. They are they're all keeping analytics of of who's buying it, their previous purchases. Um, you know, they probably even know like what the who's living in the household. You like the there's a way I'm sure that they can estimate how many people are watching it per rental. Yeah. I would say that's probably true. But that still doesn't make up for that lost money. If you have a family of four that pays 
$44 to go see a movie at the Regal versus a family of four who watches a movie for $20 in, in their living room. How do you... And also, for, a big thing for me is I like, and I know it's the same for you too, I love going to the movies. Like Going to the movies and seeing a movie is a very different experience than watching a movie at home. So do you think even that is going to... Like, I like to go see a movie when it comes out, whereas if I just have the opportunity to watch it at home, I might not, you know, watch it as soon. It might take me farther down the road. So now these opening weekends or whatever, these opening release, how are they going to, I don't know. I, it was just a question. I don't know if you know the, I don't know if anybody knows the answer. I just wanted to hear what you had to uh, say about it being, um, you know, movie people, I suppose. Yeah, it's an interesting point. I mean... Yeah, what do you think, Brian? I don't know. I just I think that that's just like the I don't think movie theaters can go for that reason alone. That's like extending like a a football season and then trying to compare single season stats. It's just like it's just a completely different thing after that. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're two yeah. different animals. But who knows? I mean the you know, the success of like that trolls movie really changed things. Um I don't know exactly how much that made, but it did like really, really well when that came out at like at home. So I think that's going to change the way a lot of studios, feel, you know, put out their movies. At least it's going to change the way it's going to change how they consider what their next step is going to be. Like they're going to start to see it as a viable option. I feel like part of that. I feel like part of that stems from the the timing, though. Yeah, like, it, cer- have- it certainly does. A time where nobody can really leave their house and every single parent in America, no matter what they tell you, is absolutely sick of their fucking child. They want nothing to do with that child right now. So if you can, if it's only going to cost you $20 to entertain your, entertain your child for two hours, like that, you know what I mean? I feel like that, because I don't know. I don't know how well other um, straight to you know, streaming service movies have done even with the increased pricing. I don't know. You got any other uh, movie movie related questions? We can move off that. I don't I don't think we need to dwell on it any longer. It's just an interesting thing to think about. Yeah, I think a lot of it's gonna be different. But I was just thinking on that drive in thing from a few minutes back. And I think that the I bet you the reason is because like I said, most of the ticket money goes to theaters and at a drive in so, you know, these places, they make their money off concessions and a drive-in. I mean, I don't think I've gone to the drive-in once in... You can bring it up. Exactly. You, you sneak in your own snacks. I don't think I've gone to a drive-in yeah. once without bringing some snacks. I mean, I still buy, like, popcorn at the drive-in because I love the popcorn when you watch a movie, no matter what or where, but I don't know. And, I mean, we kind of talked about the theater experience, but that's a huge... I mean, I guess it's it's easy to... Maybe forget about it when you're not in it, but like when the first Avengers movie came out. No, I didn't see that too. What's that? It's like the drive in seasonal too, so that's like another. Right. Thing, but. That's a good point about the drive ins. But like, uh, you know, being in the theater with, like, you know, it's a, it's a very human experience. You're with a bunch of strangers and you're all, in, you know, invested in this thing. You, you know, the, you're either invested because you're enjoying it or you're invested because you're not enjoying it. But, like... Uh, no, I'll go on and type in Avengers Endgame theater reaction and just watch it and pretend like I'm, like, back in a movie theater and I'll get rehyped. Like, just the roar of the crowd, like, that was incredible. Ex- exactly. There's almost nothing like it. I mean, you can compare it to to a sporting event, but even with that, like... You have, like, you've seen a great interception before. You've seen a great touchdown pass. But you've never seen... Yeah, I've never seen Captain America lift Thor's hammer. That's exactly what I was going to say. Just never exactly. seen it. <laughs> it's a completely unique experience seeing, you know, Vision or Captain America yeah. lift Thor's hammer out of nowhere. And I'll never forget when... Vision did it in Age of Ultron watching that movie in the theater there was a gasp the theater gasped man 
Like, everybody in a room had the same reaction to something. The same, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> not unwilling, what's that word, but whatever. But, you know, they, they couldn't control it. It was, just a, it was just an innate reaction to this thing. And, uh, if, yeah. you know, if theaters go, that's going to be the biggest... That's going to be the thing that uh, we're missing out on the most. Oh, yeah, that's what we're going to Yeah, that's going to be rough. Yeah, 100%. Man. Um, yeah. Well, uh, we've been going, wow, pretty, we've been going for a while today. But I do have one last thing to add in that I wanted to bring up okay. um, about Brian. So a few episodes back, for those of you who remember, when we first did the segment of when I was going on a date, do you recall this? Do, do I recall? Are you asking me the audience? Yeah, I'm asking you. Yeah, re- I'm making sure we're all on the same page here. So I mentioned in that episode that there was one specific person that I know listens to the podcast that I would like to not bring up this segment. That person was Brian. Not only did Brian not bring up that segment, but I was able to keep it under wraps for a very long time. However, she did officially see her first uh, Two in the Cooler clip recently, and it was uh, the video of me watching live the cameo of Darren that you sent to me. And all I'm saying is that based off of what I've seen happen on social media this week, if I was her, I would be a little bit nervous because Darren did reply to our tweet. I tweeted sup. Tweeted sup back at Darren. Darren has not yet hit me back, but the ball's in her court. I'm sure that she's probably been busy. I would assume that she'll get back to it when she gets a chance. No, I don't know. I <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to crush your dreams. I think you should absolutely, you know, continue to uh, to go for it. Shout out to Darren Page. Um, she's the best in the business. You got to watch Double Shot of Love. That's all I'm telling you. Have you ever seen that show, Brian? No, I have not. I can't blame you, but holy shit, man. <laughs> it is... It's good content. Yeah, seriously. That is... Whew, that's, what, a, what a way to end another episode with another like shout-out to Double Shot at Love. But it's a show that we cannot get enough of. And double Shot at Love. We're a strictly Double Shot at Love podcast. That's really what it comes down to. Yeah, we're the unofficial... Matthew, how was your birthday? Yes, how was your birthday, man? We didn't even talk about that. <laughs> Did you have a good birthday? I was super excited to get this birthday weekend slot. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot. I don't know. I'm not uh, I didn't have like a super. You know, I wasn't super into the whole birthday. Like, I wasn't going crazy for the celebration this year. Uh, a couple seltzers, you know, hung out. It was uh, all in all, I mean, good birthday. You know, got got some happy birthday wishes for, from some people uh, new and old that I, you know, good friends of mine, people I haven't seen in a while. So that's always nice to hear from. And uh, I don't know. I guess it was good. I didn't. It wasn't super. You know, it it is. You know, it is what it is. And uh, now I'm uh, I'm older, and we continue to move <laughs> he on. Sounds like he's in the the uh, the twilight of your years, Matthew. Jesus Christ. It's gonna be okay, kid. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> You'll be all right. All right. I'm fucking done with you two. I've dealt with you two for long okay. enough. I want to end this uh, episode. I don't want to be made fun yep, of. Yep. Two in the cooler is now uh, Brian Fletcher and I. Uh, it's a great. It's a great podcast. <laughs> Tune in every week. <laughs> We're just gonna be eating popsicles and having a good time. My closing remarks are. <laughs> my closing remarks are. One, Brian, thank you for coming on. However, I don't really like the dynamic that we oh, we started best. off with here with the whole, uh, you know, whatever little conspiracy like I've said that you two had going on. But I think it was a good episode all in all. And uh, we appreciate you for coming on. And for those of you who don't, didn't know, Crocs are back in. Go buy your Crocs. Be prepared to wait in line. And fuck anybody who tells you that it's not worth it. Fuck you too, both of <laughs> you. Alright. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. Brian. Do you got any, anything else to yeah. add, Brian? We appreciate you coming on. No, thank you for having me. Andy, thank you uh, for letting me be the new co-host. I know Matt has been picking up half the slack. I know you're everything from pre to post. 
he's just a face, so I get it. I'll help you out. Yeah, we're very happy to have you aboard. The thing is, you need a face. You do need a honest. face, and we can't. And Craig, and this one really Craig. does the trick. He's camera shy. <laughs> yeah, fuck. But if we did have a face, it, it would be Craig. He's he's quite the character. Yep. All right, Brian. Andy, finish us off here. Brian, thanks again for coming on, man. We appreciate it. We want you to come back on. Hopefully, we can do it in person sometime. Um. Yeah, yeah we definitely. Yeah. Have to Where do can it in people person, uh, follow you and stuff? Oh, Brian Fletch underscore everything, dude. Any social media you want. I'm there, dude. I'm tweeting every day. Insta stories are firing up. Just rolling out that content. What about the uh, what about the YouTube channel? If you, oh, are, if you start pumping out some content soon. I know. I've been slacking, dude. I'm blaming it on the quarantine. That's yeah, a safe bet. I, I blame everything on the yeah, quarantine. Why not? Matthew's delusional croc obsession, uh, uh, you know, obsession. That's probably just because he's been locked in for a while. I'm getting out. That's it. All right. See you guys. (laughs) Thanks, Brian. Yeah, no problem. Thank you guys. See you guys.